Hello YouTube world, this is Logic Crazy and I'm Jonathan and here's yet another uh, tutorial on creating your very own advanced Java chess engine. It's been a while since my last tutorial but I've been preparing uh, tutorials for creating a C++ engine which will be uh, quite a bit more advanced but you will need to know C++. Uh, so uh, study up on that if you're interested. They'll be uh, significantly uh, better, partly because it's just in C++ and it's faster. So let's get started here. First thing I've done is I've changed this line from initiating uh, Chess 960 to initiating standard chess again. Uh, this is for debugging purposes so that when we, uh, each time we run the engine, we'll get the same results and potentially the same errors. Uh, if it was random uh, board that you started with, sometimes you might get errors. You run it again, no error, and you don't know where to look. So it's best to uh, uh, keep uh, the results standardized for debugging. Then we come up with, uh, I created this method called possible moves w, w standing for white. So the possible moves that white can make, and it'll come up with a string, a list. Uh, every four characters will be a new move. So it'll be x1, y1, x2, y2 is kind of the move notation. So this pawn, uh, let's say here, would be 0, 0 to 1, 1 if it were to move from there to there. That sort of thing. So 0, 0, 1, 1 would be. And then without a space or a comma in between, it'll just be the next four uh, uh, digits will represent, or characters will represent the next move, and so on. And your computer will, your engine will scan through the list in pairs of four characters and find out all the possible moves from the starting position or any given position. The first thing we give it is a history. For now I'm just leaving it blank. This is useful for things like Empassant to know that the last move was a pawn moving down to, let's say, uh, a black pawn moving down to there or whatever. And uh, in that case an Empassant is possible. Otherwise an Empassant is not possible. Uh, and then we give it all of the 12 bit boards that collectively represent our any given chess board. So let's go to this uh, method for now. Uh, first I've done is I've added a bunch of bit boards, these static longs. Uh, file A represents uh, uh, files A's uh, bit board. File H represents everything in file H. So in each of these there'll be eight ones and uh, 54 zeros in there. Uh, so file A would put a 1 in all of these spots here and so on all the way down. Uh, and file H would be on the other side of the board. And these are all for uh, coming up with uh, moves uh, and figuring out where pieces can move. Then we have center, center, extended center, king side, queen side. Those things are for uh, uh, evaluating uh, which pieces are on the king side and such some more evaluation purposes. And then we have our last three. Not white pieces uh, represents uh, not only, uh, the, the name is uh, maybe poorly chosen. Uh, not white pieces not only uh, represents everything that uh, that white uh, sh uh, shouldn't capture. Uh, so, or, or can capture, I'm sorry. Uh, so it will include uh, all the black pieces, but it won't include, for instance, the black king, because it can't. You're not supposed to be able to capture the white. Should never capture the black king. Uh, so that is not included to avoid an, that illegal uh, move. Uh, black pieces uh, represent exactly as said black pieces, but they don't actually represent the black king because, again, for legal move purposes. And then empty represents everything that's not occupied, and it means exactly what it says. So just keep those definitions in mind, perhaps add comments. I've done that here in this possible moves uh, for white, where we receive uh, as parameters the history and then all the bit boards. And so uh, not white pieces, uh, avoids illegal captures by adding the not black king and uh, and we omit the black king as well from black pieces to avoid illegal captures and then empty is everything where nothing is as I've said above. Ignore time experiment for now but we'll get back to that 
soon. I'll be going fairly rapidly through this since there's a lot of material and don't want to bore you with a lot of time. So what we're going to come up with is this list. And the list will be, will be appending a bunch of different strings together. First we'll come up with all the moves that uh, white pawns can do, followed by uh, white knights, bishops, rooks, queens, and kings into uh, this list. So uh, the only one we're going to work on today is possible uh, possibilities for the white pawn. Uh, so what we do is we only need uh, to know the history uh, for empathons and such, which we won't deal with since we won't have time, and we need the, the white pawn board. Uh, these uh, three uh, bit boards here are global or static variables, so they will uh, be visible to this method. All right, so we come up with a, a bit board called pawn moves, and it will represent all the places that pawn that pawns can white pawns can capture to the right. So, if we had a bunch of pawns here, and in this scenario, only this pawn here that's flashing, and this pawn here that's flashing can actually capture to the right. So the way we come up with that is we shift everything over by 7, which takes this pawn and moves over 7. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. That ends up with uh, where it could capture. We also have to say, and there's a black piece there, and it's not rank 8, because anything that ends up on rank 8 is a promotion. It's no longer a pawn. And it can't be file A, because everything that's captured over 7 can never end up in file A's location. So that mostly applies to pieces like this pawn here, where we move uh, this pawn, shifting over 7 would be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, uh, 7 or something like that. Anyways, some bits will end up on the file A. You don't want that. So we say not file A. Then once we have this bit board representing all the moves, we loop over every bit. I'll change this from 0 to 64. We come up with all... We loop through each bit in this board using this whole method, which I believe we've discussed before. And every time we find, oh, there's a bit that's true, a bit that's turned on, then we add uh, a move in the list. We say, oh, there's a valid move. And we uh, represent it, rem remember that uh, wherever we find this bit that's a valid move, that's the destination. That's where it ended up. That's where these black pieces are that it's going to capture. So the uh, X1 and Y1 are the starting locations. So we have to say... Uh, plus one, minus one. Uh, plus one being for the uh, horizontal, and minus one meaning one, uh, one rank down, and plus one meaning uh, one file over. And then uh, the destination is exactly where I is. So it's exactly like that. And we do the same loop for uh, capturing to left, except we shift over by 9. Then we go 1 forward, we shift over by 8, making sure that the destination now is empty, not black pieces. And then we also move forward 2, making sure that not only the destination, such as here, is empty, but also that the square we're jumping over is empty, represented by empty uh, shifted over 8. So we do all of these, getting all the basic pawn moves. Uh, then we also have to... Oh, one other thing with the moving forward, too. We also have to make sure that the destination ends on rank 4. This eliminates pawns that are anywhere else but on rank 2 are not allowed to shift up uh, 2 because they wouldn't end on rank 4. Then we come up with uh, promotions, which we represent by Y1, Y2, promotion type, which would be a K, a Q... Uh, R, a B, whatever it's promoting to, and then a P to represent that it's a promotion. So, for instance, uh, a pawn here could promote uh, the 
the rank would stay the same, so Y1 and Y2, sorry, the file would stay the same. But if it was to move over to capture as it promoted, then it would move into the from the G uh, file to the H file, and so it would move from a, a 6 to a 7. And it's, uh, this would be a 6, and this would be a 7, and then this would be a Q, probably, most likely, and then a P represents it's upon promotion move. And then we will add something for Empassance, which we won't be able to get into in this tutorial, because I'm running out of time. Whoops. Now, one thing I did, I deleted these two uh, pieces of code here. I had it from I is 0 to 64, which does loop over every single bit. It loops over every single square and looks for uh, places where captures are possible, where bits are true in this uh, bit board. But when I add these two lines here, what we're basically doing is saying just look uh, in the area from that first place where I can capture to the last place. I can capture. So it eliminates searching all these other places. So if there was a, let's uh, say, the first place it saw was here, the last place it saw was here, it will search from this spot, comb over all these spots all the way to here. So it's going to be searching all these spots in the middle. I'm skipping a few, but just uh, not these just giving you an idea of all the places it's going to comb through like that from the first one to the last one or whatever the first and the last are and it eliminates then searching all these extra spots now if your pawns I know pawns can never go all the way to the corners like this but supposing they did it wouldn't be saving any time because you would be searching just as many squares either way even if most of the ones in the middle were empty so uh, you have to remember that it's not perfectly efficient but it does help improve it because in general uh, chances are the pawns are going to be you know something like this so you're only going to be searching from this pawn to let's say this pawn here which is fairly small portion of the board so it should save time 